Welcome, everybody, to Coach's Corner. And uh, hard to believe that we are into playoff mode. Playoff mode. Um, um, finished the season at 8-2 uh, and two and, and, and uh, really, really proud of our guys after losing 23 seniors and and um, not really sure what, what we had coming. Well, we knew what we had coming back, but we weren't sure how how uh, efficient we could be, how effective we could be. But um, um, played, a, played a difficult schedule, opened up with two tough games against Kenton and uh, Bishop Hartley. And uh, fortunately, we won one of those and uh, really, really helped us get into the playoffs uh, with the uh, computer points. So. So our win at Bishop Hartley and them them going nine and one got us a lot of points. And in fact, if we would not have beat them, I don't think we would have got in at seven and three and, and even at eight and two probably. So, so uh, really proud of our really proud of our guys, proud of our seniors for leading us, and then, and then a lot of help in the jun junior and uh, sophomore class. Uh, recap last week, uh, Fort Recovery game um, kind of kind of been our. Our uh, operation this year really has been in our victories, uh, other than the Hartley victory, to get off to a great start. Um, we jumped on Fort Recovery um, in the first half. Uh, um, you know, we scored 42 points the first half and, and only had the ball 12 plays. So that's pretty amazing. We had, a, uh, had an interception return for a touchdown, Adam Klosterman, and we had a long punt return by Drew Ott, and it got us down to about the one. And um, Brody Hoyne, I think, had a couple rushing touchdowns, a couple throwing touchdowns. So. So great first half, and then we got the young, got the old guys out. Did not play the whole second half. So, so we uh, trying to trying to get them rested up, feeling good uh, for the playoff run. So um, this week uh, we play uh, Pemberville Eastwood, which is up by Bowling Green, about ten minutes ten, ten minutes to the east of that. Um, good team, good team. They're also eight and two on the season. They lost to a really good Clyde team, who's a Division four school, and then uh, Genoa area, who was undefeated on the season, a really good team. Um, division, also Division Four, so they lost it. Lost to two good teams, and uh, they scored lots and lots of points. I mean, they've been in the 50s and 60s probably four or five times this year. Uh, they run the uh, wing T offense, um, and so so we haven't seen that a whole lot. I guess Anna um, has has run the wing T, and so we've seen it enough there over the years. And Bishop Hartley runs a form of it. So so I guess we've played two teams this year that run uh, at least at least similar type type of offense. Um, they have. They have three good backs that they use them all, and the, the fullback is, is their main running back, even though he's really not like a fullback. He's a, he's a real quick kid, has over 1,000 yards rushing. And, uh, and then the two, the, the, the uh, wing and the slot um, that line up opposite each other, um, sometimes in the backfield, but most of the time uh, outside the tight end and in a slot. Um, both have about 500 yards each. So they have three guys that, that uh, mix it up. They do not throw a lot. I think their leading receiver has 11 catches, so, so they don't throw a lot, but but I guess enough to, to make you make you honor it. Um, so, so the wing tee presents problems because of the misdirection and, and a lot of false keys. So, so you think the ball's going here, going there, and, and you're not really sure at first. So hopefully we can, we can string them out, make them run flat, and uh, run down the ball carriers. So uh, that's, uh, that's their offense. Uh, defensively, they run a 3-5-3, which is, is, I guess, a little bit similar to Marion. Um, they do have our Marion tape, so, so you know, I'm sure they'll be watching that closely. Um, so they have five good, five linebackers. They're not real, real big guys, but but um, they're kind of like us. You know, they got a lot of good athletes that run to the ball well, blitz some, and we'll see. After seeing our Marion tape, maybe they'll do more of that. So we'll have to figure that out once the game starts. Um, I guess keys to victory for us is uh, not giving up big plays, make them work, and eventually, typically, if we make them work all the way down the field, we we usually can stop teams and and uh, make them go the long haul, and then offensively. Um, kind of, kind of do what we do, and and mix in the run and the pass, and and get Brody and Shaney in some space, and Adam Klosterman, and and uh, you know make some plays, make some plays, and not turn the ball over. I, I guess would be be the the two most important things. Uh, don't give up big plays, and uh, not turn the ball over. So, again, we go to Pemberville Eastwood in the first round of the playoffs. We're going. We we went north this year, uh, in the region, in the huge region. Uh, we span all the way almost up to up to Cleveland and. And uh, the whole northwest uh, corner, corner, and, and really almost, uh, like I said, almost to Cleveland. So a wide, wide range. So we could play some teams this year. Hopefully, we can keep rolling on. That uh, next week would be another, another matchup where we have would play a team that we've never played before. So, so that'll be fun. Uh, but we got to take care of business this week. So I think this is going to be a good, good, tough game uh, up at Eastwood. So looking forward to it. And the kids are kids are excited about it. And so. Uh, Hopefully you can come and come to the game. If not, I'm sure it'll be on radio, uh, and I'm sure you can listen to that online on radio. Um, now, now that 
now with all the good technology, I guess. So, um, and you can see the highlights and uh, see the stats and all that kind of thing right here on uh, on CavFootball.com. So, so uh, follow us, follow us all the way, and hopefully we'll get a victory and and keep moving on. Go Cavs!